the stars to And if God is for you, who can be against you? Let's make Jesus famous. This is our time. 2021, a year of divine restoration. A year of... was present so there was hope a disaster this morning then the deliverer is present if you're in a fire this morning then the deliverer is present in jesus name if you're going through a storm the karma of the storm is present this morning oh come on in jesus name there's no mountain too high there's no valley too deep that he cannot lead you through he still is the resurrection and the life and that is why on easter morning i believe that god is going to do great things in many of your lives we're not going to roll over the stone has been rolled away this COVID stone is going to be rolled away and god's people are going to come forth triumphantly and the name of jesus will be exalted oh come on i feel a spirit of praise in this place if you've not been in a church jump out of your seat this morning and give the lord a praise in your home in the name of jesus hallelujah
in only three days, Jesus experienced death to life. In three days, Jesus experienced betrayal, loss, love, acceptance, suffering, and finally, life. In only three days, the most crucial events of the Christian calendar are established. The crucifixion, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The power of our faith was birthed in the tomb. The stone rolled away. The body wrapped in linen. The cry, He has risen. But as we know, with every end comes a beginning. Experience with us those three fundamental days. The three days that would establish the victory we now stand on. That would make Jesus Christ the most sought after human on earth. It all started with the crucifixion. And these were the events that led to it. But he endured the suffering that should have been ours, the pain that we should have bore. All the while we thought that his suffering was a punishment sent by God. But because of our sins, he was wounded, beaten because of our evil deeds. We are healed by his wounds and the punishments he suffered, made whole by the blows that he received.
Imagine something as horrific as this. <laughs> I can't look, <laughs> but I have to. <laughs> this is the last time that I'll be able to look <laughs> on the face of my boy. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. He was my boy, but he was so much more than that. He is the son of God. And while he was on earth, he performed miracles. He healed people's illnesses, cast out demons, forgave sinners. No human being could be that perfect. Time and time again that he is in fact the son of God. For every follower that listened to Jesus' teachings was a religious leader that discarded them. They were jealous of Jesus and the honor bestowed upon him. His very existence was a thorn in their flesh. And the words he spoke bore these thorns deeper and deeper until they could not bear it anymore. They wanted Jesus dead. From the minute that I felt Jesus move inside of my womb, I knew, I knew that God had a plan for his life. A plan that would be greater than myself, greater than all of us. I don't know what happened. Where is God now? <laughs> what Mary did not understand at the time was that all of this was part of God's master plan to save us from ourselves. Judas betraying Jesus for a couple of pieces of silver. The soldiers beating and lashing the very man who in a few hours time would offer up his life for them. The crowd shouting out. No! Crucify him! And the governor at his trial, Pilate, who said, I find no fault with this man. Each of these moments, like falling dominoes, leading up to the death of Jesus. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. It is finished. Because of the loss of blood and the compression upon his heart, due to the lungs being filled with fluid, Jesus died in about six hours. Since the crucifixion took place on the eve of a Sabbath, and it was against Jewish law for anyone to hang on the cross during a Sabbath, the Roman soldiers would come and break the limb! <laughs> 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 
when this was done, the victims would be unable to lift themselves. They'd be able to breathe in the air, but not be able to exhale it. When the legs were broken, it would only be a matter of minutes before the victims would die of suffocation. Both of the thieves' legs were broken. But when they came to Jesus, he was already dead. The soldiers drove a spear into Jesus' side and immediately out came blood and water. Jesus' legs did not have to be broken as was spoken by the prophets of old. And so the prophecy was fulfilled. The bread in your body, the wine in your blood, sweet communion, you set a table for us. The crucified Jesus, no greater love than the bread in your body, than the wine in your blood. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, we will. Yeah, yeah. The holes in your hands and the wounds in your side. Thirty-nine lashes brought me back to life. And before resurrection, there was a grave. In hell there was a battle. Closer than I've ever been. Oh, 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 we will remember. There was a disciple of Jesus named Joseph who came from Arimathea.
fear. He was a rich man. He had made a new tomb in the garden near the place where Jesus died. Nicodemus helped Joseph. They took the dead body of Jesus down from the cross and they took it to the new tomb. However, the chief priests and Pharisees who started this war, who worked day and night to see Jesus' body finally on that cross, went about to loosen the reins. After the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees asked Pilate for a guard to secure the tomb to prevent the disciples from stealing the body so that they can claim that the tomb is empty, thus fulfilling Jesus' prophecy of rising on the third day. When Pilate heard of this request, he said, I will give you a guard. Go your way and make the tomb secure. Pilate sent his soldiers to guard the tomb. What many didn't know is I was a follower of his. When I asked for the body, Pilate did not even hesitate. They say I'm a good, upright man. But above these labels given to me by man, what my heart yearns for is the kingdom of God. I'll take his body, the one I followed in secret, and wrap it in linen cloth and lay it in this new tomb. It's over. Any future hope we had is gone. How could the Son of God die? No one could kill him against his will, could they? For three years, I followed this man, Jesus. I had seen signs, miracles, and wonders, and I experienced true purpose in life. But now, what will become of us? They've taken our leader. They killed the one who gave me purpose. Where am I? How can I get out of this situation? What if I'm so lost and far from my first love? Am I the only one feeling like this? What moment you feel unstoppable in the next? Defeat it! Hey, hey, do not fear. Fear not, and only believe. He chose to die. He chose to lay down his own life. He was chosen by God for this very purpose. He was chosen to be the sacrifice of sin for all the world so that we can experience a life without sin, fear, loss, Tragedy. Jesus obeyed God his Father up until his death on the cross. He died a painful, horrible death. Many people mocked him. He died! How can you be rejoicing? How can you even imagine living in a world without sin and sorrow? It's true, it's true. This is it. No. This is the end. No. The world has lost no. it. There is no love, there is no purpose, and there is no way out! No, no. God is still with us. I don't know how, but he always keeps his promises to us. Always. Yeah.
crossed my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my savior on that cursed tree his body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still And now it seems as if this promise is too far gone. Considering all the miracles that Jesus performed while walking among us, surely he could have stopped them from killing him. I know. 
I know I've seen him perform miracles by healing the sick. I even hear he raised people from the dead. And now, there he lies, dead. This, this can't be the end. Can it? There has to be more. God doesn't stray away from what he has promised. And surely his son is the same. Yes. And so the stone was sealed. The door shut. Death overcame the one who was sent to save us. Well, at least that was the sentiment of the day. The chief priests and Pharisees who started this all showed just how committed they were to use whatever means necessary to get rid of Jesus and all the hope he brought to the people once and for all. But we know that nothing and no one can stop God's plan. Yes, amen. And in the same way that man could not hold the body of Jesus down, no one can suppress the body of Christ. Yes, yes, Lord. No matter what plan or schemes the enemy has against the church, no matter how dead or hopeless a situation may seem, with God, death is never the end. No. no. There is something brand new on the horizon, something no man or devil can stop. God is building his church, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it.
The next morning, there was a shift. Fear removed and faith restored. The tomb was empty. Jesus rose from the grave. Death knocked and for the whole world it seemed like the end of the road. You might have experienced death, destruction, hopelessness, but wait. Be patient. While the grave is empty, there is hope. Jesus is present, so there is hope. You are alive. There is hope. Sometimes it might just be around the corner, and if you wait long enough, you will find it. If God did all of this in just three days, crucifixion, death, resurrection, Imagine what God can do for you in only three days, three hours, three minutes, now! Love has won and mercy has prevailed. The tomb of hopelessness and despair is, is now empty. empty. Resurrection and life were in the very presence of death and death had been defeated once and for all. God is here and he is alive and he wants to walk you through your valley god wants to bring you out of it there is hope there is hope and we need to rise up we need to rise up out of our current situation rise up from hopelessness and from defeat rise up to overcome and conquer the victory jesus died on the cross for lay down his life for rise up and take back what the enemy had stolen in 2020 rise up and recover all and more yes oh. Scared to move and walk out of this tomb Buried underneath the lies that you believe Safe and sound, stuck in the ground Too lost to be found You're just asleep And it's time to leave Come on, rise up, take a breath You're alive now the Holy Spirit calling us out from the grave like Jesus, your brand new power that couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the Holy Spirit calling us out from the grave like Jesus? Rise up, rise up, out from the grave like said your name, the things that filled your veins was more than blood, the kind of love that washes sin away. Now the door is open wide, and the stones may roll the side. The old is gone, the light has come, so come on and rise up. Take a breath, you're alive now. Can't you hear the Holy Spirit calling us out from the grave like Jesus? Your brand new power that couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the Holy 
As though the enemy had the victory and Jesus was nowhere to be seen, God had the final word. God gave the final blow that would defeat the enemy once and for all. We have this good news that God gave us eternal salvation through Jesus Christ. No more shame or guilt or the deadly grip that sin had on us all. While the grave is empty, there is hope. Yeah. While you're alive, yeah. there is hope. And if God gave His one and only Son to die for you, don't you think He'd give you everything else? Make a decision today. Face your fears and overcome by faith in Jesus. Declare it. I will live and I will not die. Yeah. The Bible instructs us that when we want to lose heart, to go over every single detail of this moment in history over and over again. How Jesus experienced excruciating pain, shame, abandonment. But he endured it all because he knew that death wouldn't have the final yeah. say. Right. Jesus is risen. And he is our resurrected king and is seated at the right hand of God. Jesus told us, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Allow the Holy Spirit to direct, comfort, and encourage you. Through Jesus, we see our Heavenly Father's heart. We see that God is deeply moved by the cries of his people. That he wants to have an intimate relationship with each and every single one of us. God wants to lead you through your valley. He is not the one behind your tragedy or disaster. He is the one that will bring you divine restoration, mm, yeah. healing, and deliverance. Again, we say, fear not, only believe. It is because of this great sacrifice that we can have a personal relationship with Him in our lives. His resurrection power lives inside of us, and therefore every dead thing can come to life. Tonight, we just want to welcome you to come and stand and worship with us, this great and mighty King, the King of Kings and the Lord of all Lords.
every head bowed, every eye closed, no one moving in this place. In all our churches gathered around South Africa, right in your home tonight where you are. The story tonight, the greatest love story ever told. Story about the love that God has for humanity, for you and for me. That God so loved this world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. That God did not send His Son into this world to condemn the world. But that this world, you and me, could be saved. My dear friend, the Bible says in Romans 3 verse 23, We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You see, we were born in sin. doesn't matter what your father did, who your grandfather is, what your culture is. We were born separated from God. In Romans 6 verse 23, the Bible says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans chapter 5 verse 8, the Bible says, While we were sinners, God demonstrated His love, that He sent His Son to die for you and me. Maybe tonight you are standing in this place, watching your television, and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. Maybe tonight your eyes open. For you, this was a religion that God was someone distant out there. Maybe at one time you served God. Maybe like the prodigal son, you left your father's house. Or Peter, who became disillusioned by the death of Jesus. Maybe this lockdown, something disillusioned you. Maybe you went through a bad relationship, a business loss. Maybe a friend. Maybe some addiction, an old habit has come back into your life. Today is Resurrection Sunday. And today you can get out of your grave, whatever that is. That tomb may very well be the tomb that you find yourself in tonight. Spiritually, emotionally, mentally. But God loves you too much to leave you there. That's why He brought you to this place. We got you to watch this channel. He wants your attention. He wants a relationship with you. He shed His blood so that you could have peace with God. So every head bowed, every eye closed in this place, in all our churches, wherever you are tonight, in your home. Tonight you say, Pastor, I need a fresh start with God, a new beginning. I need to be born again. I want to come back to Jesus. I don't want to live one foot in the world, one foot in the church. Teenager, young person, the claws of this world trying to get you back where you were. No, God is calling you to surrender all to Him. Maybe at one time you prayed this prayer. Maybe at one time you were even a leader in a church somewhere on fire for God. But somehow you lost that passion, as many did. When Jesus was crucified, Peter said, I go fishing. The others said, we go with you. Come back to Jesus tonight. Come back to the foot of the cross. There's room for you tonight at the foot of the cross. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God is talking to you tonight, standing on the balcony, standing over there in Bloemfontein, standing in Johannesburg, Cape Town, Durban, Vintu, Khabarone, one of the churches, Pots of Struham. And there is something happening in your heart tonight. It is Jesus calling you to come home. Every head bowed, every eye closed, believers praying. Tonight you say, Pastor, that's me. I need a fresh start with God, a new beginning. I want to get right with God. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to surrender all to Him tonight. If that is the cry of your heart, then quietly, wherever you are. Yes, they're in your lounge as well. Just raise your hand. I want to say a prayer for you. Quickly, all over this place. Raise your hand. Slip it up all over this place. Raise it up. Raise it up. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you. Hands everywhere. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. 
God bless you. Thank God in a, from the month of May, we're going to bring people forward to our altars again. Amen. And we're going to see revival and we're going to see thousands of people getting saved every single Sunday. This lockdown of the devil has not worked. Jesus rose from the grave and we are going to go into revival. The month of May, we are going into revival mode and we are going to plunder hell and populate heaven unashamedly in Jesus' name. You've not yet raised your hand. Slip your hand up quickly. God praat met you. Kom broer, daar waar jy staan vanavond. Hier is die voeling hier binnenkant. Dit is die heilige geest. Die ongemakkelijkheid. God sien jou. Tel jou hand op. No, in Jesus' naam. Tegen hoor aan Gods roepstem binnen. Sê ja, sluit my eigen gebed in. Now, in the name of Jesus. Raise it up. God bless you. Now, in Jesus' name. Slip it up. Slip it up. There's a heaven to gain a hell to shun. This is the most important decision you can make in your life. When you give yourself to Jesus. All our beautiful FBN people, welcome with us tonight. It's almost the end. If you raised your hand or you did not, you want to give your life to Jesus. I want you to put your hand on your heart right now. Pray this prayer with me. Wherever you are, God is standing right there hearing your prayer. Say this right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I call on your name tonight. Please save me. Wash me in your blood. Give me the power tonight to be a child of God. I repent from my sin. I turn back to you. I give all to you tonight. I believe with my whole heart that you are the Christ. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe you rose from the grave. I believe you are alive. Tonight, Jesus Christ, I declare and I confess you are my Lord. You are my Savior. I will follow you all the days of my life in Jesus' name. Thank you for hearing my prayer. I'm born again. Amen and amen. And amen. Come on, let all the saints rejoice with the angels over the many, many people making a decision for Jesus tonight. Please, there's an address on the screen. Write that um, address. We want to put a Bible in your hands. Many of you raised your hands. There's altar workers all over this place. Somebody's going to talk to you after the service. We want to put a Bible in your hand. We want to help you in this journey that you started tonight, okay? A comeback is never easy, but you've taken the first step. As if Faith TV goes, God bless you, Dr. Andre and Jenny. We love you and all the viewers of Faith TV. God bless you. Give them a big hand clap in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, we're not going to play church, okay? We are now going to plunder hell and populate heaven from this Sunday. We are no longer going to stay and suck our thumbs. We're going to bring our world to church. And we are going to do it safely. And we are going to see the harvest come to Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Okay. A big shout out to uh, Carla. Where's Carla? I'm going to give you a hard clip. Come, come, come. Hello. Carla, she says, I'm going to give box, but what a fantastic. Uh, she put this all together. Carla and all her team. Come on, you can clap your hands. That was a brilliant production. Carla, her husband is Lefuno. He leads the music ministry. Great music. No, 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 no. Come here. I want to brag about you. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, she is. Okay. Uh, come on, let's say a big thank you. They had a little bit of time to put this production to be, uh, together. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, all the actors were brilliant. All the dancers were brilliant. All the singers were brilliant. All the musicians were brilliant. All the camera work. Uh, camera uh, operators were brilliant the sound was brilliant everybody brilliant in a short time you pulled off a brilliant production props to all of you love to all of you i'm so proud of you amen next year we're gonna have an orchestra okay i want an orchestra i sat there tonight and i thought we're gonna do real something that's gonna blow everybody's minds okay um i want a full orchestra so um, do something, um, I mean, next year we're going to celebrate Easter like it's nobody's business. And uh, we're not going to go away on holiday. We're going to invite our families to our church and to our place. And we are going to celebrate Jesus Christ in a proper way, unashamedly in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. Give the Lord one more big praise offering tonight. He is good. Come on. Celebrate the goodness of God. Come on. That grave is empty. Jesus Christ is alive. He's risen. Oh, come on, Christian. That is the greatest 
day of celebration and we celebrate that every single Sunday because every Sunday, the first day of the week, we remember that Jesus is alive. That's why we get dressed up on a Sunday. We wake our family up. We get them out of bed. We break the bad habit of sitting in front of our television and we come and serve the Lord from this coming Sunday. Say amen in the name of Jesus. God's fire and God's power is going to fall like we have never seen in the coming months. Believe me, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Take your seat. Let everything be done decently and in order. Praise God. I, I just want to say this. Um, we never put anybody's health at risk. Let me make it very clear. And I'll say it every Sunday because all our presentations with, to the president has been scientific. We have proven scientifically with swabs before, during, every after, after service that over three months we haven't had a sign of COVID in our church building, not here, not Johannesburg, not our two facilities in Bloomingdale. We do everything very safe. We spray things in the building. We spend hundreds of thousands every single month just on this auditorium, hundreds of thousands on Johannesburg, uh, on Bloomingdale to make sure it is the safest place in town because we respect you enough to give you a safe environment. We do not mess with your health. We give you the safest environment. This will be safer than any restaurant, than any business, any shopping center, than anything else. And I'll tell you something, that this COVID is no longer going to stop us from worshiping God. Satan is not stealing our worship no more. Shout amen. Can I have an amen from some believer? Just in this church, we have hundred, over 130 doctors just in this church, most of them specialists. So believe me, you're as safe as you'll be any place. Your, your chair today already has been sanitized three times. Three times. Your chair that you sit on. I sat in a restaurant on Friday and I watched the table next door. The people got up and they just put new cutlery on. Never sanitized nothing. Not even sanitizer on any table. Not even sanitized when you walk in. Right? Walk in a shopping center, who sanitizes you? Nobody. But the government wants to, you to believe that a place of worship is unsafe. And I challenge you as a believer to stop that mediocre nonsense and make up your mind tonight, today, on this Sunday, that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come on. We'll serve God better than anything else because God matters more than anything else. Oh, come on, can I have an amen in Jesus' name? Every day people climb on taxis. The lady that works for me says, uh, 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 she calls me Muruti. I don't know what that means. I know, man. Do a minute. Say, say. She says, I, I, I come every, time, every weekend because I don't believe anybody that works for you should work on a Sunday. I don't believe you should. Sorry now, I, I, why am I saying this? Because you need to hear this. It's selfish for you to come to church and the person that works in your house has to make food for you and they don't have Sunday off where they can go and worship God the way they should worship God. Okay? So, so I don't believe. I don't believe. I'll have takeaways over a weekend, that's fine, I'm not going to die. But the lady that works for me deserves the same dignity that I have. So she's off every weekend with her family. Worships God in her church. Huh? Teach your kids to make their own beds. We talk about Displaying Christianity, start in your home. Now, can I have the lady work in my house on a Sunday while I'm sitting in church? Okay. You see, I haven't preached and I haven't upset anybody today, so. Um. But she said to me, she climbs. It's a very selfish thing, in any case. Extremely selfish. I didn't say you selfish. I said it's a selfish thing. Get rid of that selfish behavior. Your kids can make food as well. People who work in your house are not your servants. Uh, 
Amen. So in any case, she said every weekend when she comes back, she says, I sit in a taxi, there's 18 people, and most people don't wear masks. And she said, I can't understand why the president doesn't want churches open. Because everybody, nobody keeps social distancing anywhere. And then the president stands up and he says the virus is down because of everybody's obedience. And we all know that nobody's obeying nothing. We told him the only lockdown is on a Sunday when it comes to church buildings. Why? Why do you present this, that the church is an unsafe place? Why? Then why would South Africans that call themselves Christians, and I'll challenge that till it changes. The first right they give up is their right to go to their place of worship. Can you explain that to me? Will you go tell Jesus that one day in heaven? That you would rather have your child in school than in Sunday school. Can you explain that? And they, and they force an ungodly education, religious system, and sexual orientation down your child's throat. And you're okay with that, but it's okay that the church is closed. We need to wake up. We need to wake up and become the church and stand for truth. Otherwise, what Jesus did means nothing. This is not just on an Easter where you come religiously and you feel bad for your sin. This is what Jesus came to redeem humanity. To reconcile us back to God. And the only worthy cause is to reach people for Jesus. You can't take your money to heaven. You're not going to take your fame. You're not going to take your power. You're not going to take your pleasure. You're not taking your opinion. You're not taking your culture. We need to fall on that rock whose name is Jesus and become broken. And fall in love with Him all over again. And live for Him. I don't know about you, but I don't like the hypocritical thing. And I don't like double standards. And I don't like the attitude that some people are afraid to go to church, but they're not afraid to go anywhere else. I mean, this bothers me. understand? It bothers me as a man of God. It bothers me as a child of God that Christians would give up their right to go to a place of worship rather than their right to go to a public restaurant. Can you explain that to me? That they would rather give up their right to go to a place of worship than their right to go to a shopping center. As if the shopping center is going to get you to heaven. As if the restaurant's going to get you to heaven. And Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You say, Pastor, why do you say it all the time? Because you need some persuading. You need some convincing. You need some changing. You need to fall in love with God and the things of God again. Otherwise, this is religion. Amen. Any questions? What cause is more worthy? Nothing else matters. Do you realize it? You realize you came to this world naked and you're leaving naked? But we're willing to sacrifice our spiritual well-being for what? For safety. What safety? What about the TB? What about the AIDS pandemic that's going to get ugly now again? Because in the lockdown, people never had access to the ARV because of fear. What about the health crisis hitting us that's going to make this 50,000 people who died supposedly, fictitiously, get mad fictitiously? Because suddenly, suddenly nobody died of flu in the last year. Nobody died of pneumonia. Think, man. I'm not saying this virus is not real. But the virus cannot control us. I said the virus cannot control us. It might still be around for a few years. And we need to learn to live with this devil and defeat this devil. And get on with our lives as we are. And get back to worship. Get back to worship. 
I said we need to get back to worship. Come on, can I have an amen? And somebody give the Lord one more praise offering in this place tonight in Jesus' name. Now, if you're a skeptic, that you're right. I, I, I appreciate that. There were many skeptics at the cross. There were even skeptics when, after they saw Jesus rise from the dead. And uh, he said, go wait in Jerusalem. I'm sending the Holy Ghost. They could not wait 10 days. 500 saw Jesus. 120 waited. So I understand the skeptical Christians. I don't understand them, but there's a whole bunch of them. Cynical, skeptical, just like those 380 that saw Jesus physically ascend. But would not listen to what he said. Think about it. 120 out of 500 listened. I don't think the stats are very different today. Because we choose to believe what we want to until he becomes everything. And once he becomes everything, your father, your mother, your culture, your friend can no longer control you. If you're going to clap, clap better than that because you're definitely not clapping for me. Amen. So we pray for our government and uh, we are good citizens of South Africa. But not to the point of disobeying the word of God. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. Amen. So we will open and uh, we will announce it and we will open our children's church everything 50 percent we're going to open our children's church we're going to open our churches safely and we are going to worship god unashamedly and safely and any scientist that has something to say or government official will have to come prove me prove to me prove to me prove to me that what we do is unsafe you say you sound very arrogant no i'm very confident I'm more confident than any shop owner, more confident than any mine owner, more confident than any taxi owner, more confident than any business owner that you put your foot in this place, you at no risk. As a matter of fact, we're taking it to a whole nother level of, of, of a new product that uh, we, we are releasing. Dr. Louis Pell will talk about it. We'll make a clip this week that you spray on people's masks and hands and it keeps any COVID virus away from you for seven to eight hours so you'll have a bonus you, you'll you'll get sanitized yeah and you'll be in church for an hour and then you COVID free uh, for another six seven hours you say I can't say that I just said it and I'll say it again I'll stand by science I stand by the science we have proven and uh, we will build the church that way as well put nobody's life at risk but we're not putting people's spirituality at risk any longer no more no more Young people need to get back in the house of God. Get out of drugs, get out of addiction, get out of partying, get out of the taverns, get out of the clubs. Amen. It's not a game for us, man. This is not a game. I'm 56, I'm not 26. I can sit in a corner as well and talk to a camera from my desk, better than anybody else. I choose not to do it for your sake and for your children's sake. It's not a game. Everybody has to decide where you stand. Right? This cost Jesus everything. It didn't cost him something. It cost him everything. God never sent an angel. He sent his son. He sent heaven's best. When Jesus hung on that cross... He suffered for you and me. And we want convenient Christianity. No. No. 
Ah, uh-uh. I call now. No. No. Ah, uh-uh. no. 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 Come Sunday, I dress up. I dress my children up. I go serve the Lord. It's for me in my house. I get out of my lazy boy and I go serve the Lord my God. Come on. Because he's worthy. Because he's worthy. I don't care what people say. I'm going to praise him. I don't care whether people say, shut up. I'm going to praise him because Jesus himself said, if you don't praise me, the rocks will cry out. I'm going to praise him before this building begins to praise and worship the Lord. Okay, we're going to praise him. We're going to get our friends saved and we're going to get our family saved. And we're going to get the backsliders saved and we're going to get the prodigals back to God. And we're going to get young people on fire for God again. And we're going to break the shackles of addiction off of young people in the name of Jesus. And the greatest generation will arise on planet Earth. That generation that Satan wants to destroy the next generation. Those are the people we stand for. I understand you're 50, 60 years old, you're okay. But young people are not okay. They need to be in the presence of God. Amen. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God make His face shine upon you. May God be gracious to you. May the angel of the Lord go before you to prosper your way. May God use you as His ambassador. May God open doors that have been closed. May God be a light in your darkest valley. May God grant you mercy. May goodness and mercy follow you every day of your life. May God give you new territory. May God enlarge your territory. May God keep all evil away from you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you strong. Keep you from the evil one. Keep you triumphantly. May the blood of Jesus Christ protect you and your family. May this be a year of divine restoration where God Himself as your good shepherd will lead you and guide you and preserve you and feed you and head you in behind and before. May every weapon that is formed against you not prosper in the name of Jesus. May your enemies who come against you be driven before you seven ways. May that which you have lost be restored double, double, double. May this be a year of great delight where you see the goodness and the mercy and the favor of God manifest in your life. May the light of God shine over your life and may every dead area come alive again by the touch and by the anointing and by the power of the wonderful Holy Ghost in the precious name that is still above every other name, the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, give Him one more praise in Jesus' name. Amen, family. Can we just ask that we grab our seats for a moment, please? There's pastors and leaders that is assigned to every block. In a moment, they're going to get up and they're going to show you. We're going to go block by block. Please help us and work with us that as you leave the building, please don't get in groups together on the outside as we leave towards our vehicles. Have a blessed week, family, as the pastors and the leaders rise and direct accordingly.